So I recently put out a video where I covered one fact about every Paldea Pokemon, but since there are 120 to cover, that was just part one. In this video, I am here to finish the job by providing some cool facts on the second half of Paldea's decks. So with that said, let's get into it. So these Paldea Pokemon facts are happening thanks in part to you guys, and in particular, everyone who has picked up one of my Focaccia plushies. This little guy is my mascot, as you may know by now, and this plush of him in particular is just awesome. It's super cute, soft, really well made, and like, it's a plush of one of my own characters, which is amazing all on its own. It's honestly the first step in a lot of next level type of things that I want to do with the channel going forward. So if you like what I do here and want to continue to see cool next level type of content like this from this channel, consider picking up a Focaccia plush at histrobyshop.com. That link is in the description below. It's super appreciated if you check it out and pick one up. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone who has picked one up so far. Again, you can pick one up with the link below, they're super soft and adorable, I honestly love mine, and thanks again to all of you guys for all of your amazing support. Okay, so we're picking back up where we left off last time with Cyclozar, and it shares a category with Skiddo and Gogoat as they are all known as the Mount Pokemon. This is ironic though, since unlike Skiddo and Gogoat, Cyclozar cannot be ridden by the player even though you see tons of other people riding them in Scarlet and Violet. Obviously, this is cause you're riding Coridon and Miraidon instead, but it's still kinda funny in my opinion. Orthworm's Pokedex entry in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet says that when attacked, this Pokemon will wield the tendrils on its body like fists and pelt the opponent with a storm of punches. However, despite this claim, Orthworm can't actually learn any punching moves whatsoever. Glimmit, its evolution Glamora, and Nihilego are the only rock poison type Pokemon that currently exist, and they all have some strange things in common. They're all very alien-like in appearance, they have a distinct association with a key area in their respective games, and as such also have heavy ties to the plots of their respective games as well and they also have an association with a key female character in their respective games, with Glamora being tied to Gita and Nihilego to Lusamine. Speaking of Gita, many were unimpressed with her champion battle and lamented the fact that she used her Glamora last as her ace, when its ability, Toxic Debris, would have been used much more effectively if Glamora was used in the battle first instead. Game Freak actually listened to this feedback, as in the Indigo Disc DLC, battles with Gita have her using her Glamora first, and then her King Gambit last, which was another suggestion from the community, which overall is pretty cool. Grievard is a pretty ingeniously designed Pokemon, as not only is it cute in general, but its design is all based around a pun, as its concept originates from Greaves, which is a byproduct of an old candle making process from before the more modern wax candle took over. Greaves are also used in dog food as well, and the word itself is a homophone of grieve, as in to grieve someone's passing, which explains its ghost type. Houndstone, as well as Grievard, have another cool distinction as well, as they were designed by Kazuyuki Kurashima, a character designer for Super Mario RPG, who also contributed to the creation of the fan favorite character Gino from that game. In Flamigo's Pokedex art, there is actually an error, as two of the Flamigo that can be seen in the image have their wings both spread out and tucked in at the same time. 
Satoddle's Dex entry in Pokemon Scarlet says that this species left the ocean and began living on land a very long time ago. It seems to be closely related to Whelmer. This, number one, implies a historical variant of Satoddle existed at one time, which is pretty cool, and also is the opposite of what actual whales did, as they originated on land and evolved to live in the sea instead. Its evolution to Titan has the honor of currently owning the longest cry of any Pokemon in existence, at over four seconds long. Veluza is a Pokemon with an interesting backstory in terms of its origins and how it is utilized in the games. It is likely based on the Hake fish, with Spain being the biggest consumer of Hake in the world, which would explain its presence in the Paldea region, and is further characterized in the games by the fact that Veluza is used by the gym leader Kofu, who is also a chef. As is only fitting for these Pokemon, I am going to cover the facts for Dondozo and Tatsugiri together. Both of these Pokemon, as well as their shinies, were designed by James Turner. In turn, no pun intended, these are also some of the last Pokemon that James has designed, that we know of anyway, since he has since left Game Freak. Annihilate was either alluded to or inspired by a Pokedex entry from Primeape in Pokemon Sun, where it says it has been known to become so angry that it dies as a result, which naturally would explain Annihilate's ghost typing. Clodsire is a regional evolution of Paldean Wooper, and its design connects to Wooper pretty ingeniously. Paldean Wooper has gills that are shaped in the form of a skull and crossbones, which alludes to its poison typing as the symbol is typically used as a warning for toxic substances. However, it also alludes to its evolution, Clodsire, because its ability to protrude spines from its back is based on the Iberian ribbed newt, and its ability to protrude its own bones from its body more specifically its ribs, as a defense mechanism, giving these Pokemon a pretty seamlessly integrated bone theme, which is pretty cool. The Dunsparce, despite being a pretty lame evolution in the opinion of most people, does have a pretty cool design feature, as it actually makes a reference to alcohol, believe it or not. Its segmented body is actually most likely meant to resemble sake and wine gourds, since its main inspiration, the mythical Tsuchinoko, is said to have a taste for alcohol. If you've ever wondered why a giraffe Pokemon like Giraffarig gained an evolution in Farigaraf in a Spain-based region of all places, well, I have an answer for you. It is likely because the remains of an ancestor of the giraffe, known as Decenatherium, have only ever been found in Spain. Skulls of it also seem to show that it had four horns, just like Farigaraf does. King Gambit may sound like it has a pretty simple name, but as is the case with Pokemon, it's actually very well researched. It comes from the phrase, the King's Gambit, which is a chess move and follows the chess theme of its line. This connects to Paldea where it originates because one of the earliest chess books ever written was written by a guy from Spain. Luis Ramirez de Lucena authored this book, which described the King's Gambit move that King Gambit is named after. And, as if that wasn't good enough already, King Gambit's name also likely comes from the term Karambit, due to their resemblance to one another, and also because Karambit is the name of a knife, which this Pokemon is obviously heavily themed around as well. Now we get into the Paradox Pokemon, though, and we begin with Great Tusk. 
Great Tusk currently holds the distinction of being the only Pokemon with the ground fighting typing. Brute Bonnet resembling a dinosaur, along with its mushroom inspiration, may be based around the Fims hypothesis, which proposes the idea that fungal blooms, like mushrooms, contributed to the overall extinction of the dinosaurs. Believe it or not, Screamtail is partially based on a vampire. This is seen in its fangs, its trait of screaming, which equates to the hissing and shrieking that vampires are known to do, and in the way that its tail resembles the slicked back hair that vampires are also known for. I must admit, Vampire Jigglypuff is not a thing that I ever expected to see happen, but here we are. All Paradox Pokémon, including our next Pokémon, Fluttermane, are taller than their modern-day counterparts. Speaking of tall, the past Paradoxes are big boys because Slitherwing is not only the tallest bug-type Pokémon at this time, at 10.5 feet tall, but it is also the tallest fighting-type Pokémon as well. Transitioning from height to weight, Sandy Shocks is the only Paradox Pokémon that weighs the same as its modern-day counterpart, as both it and Magneton weigh 132.3 pounds, or 60 kilograms. Getting into the future Paradox Pokémon now, we take a look at Iron Treads, and it, along with Great Tusk in Pokémon Scarlet, are implied to be the first Paradox Pokémon to be discovered by Heath and his expedition team, as recorded in the Scarlet and Violet books. Iron Bundle is a water ice type which is pretty interesting since Delibird, who Iron Bundle is obviously based on, had a beta design that was also Water Ice type, which could be connected even though it's impossible at this time to say for sure. However, it's pretty ironic considering that it's coming from a past form of Delibird and is being used on a future form of the Pokémon. You may think that the future paradoxes are just robot versions of the Pokémon they emulate, but there's a little more to it than that with Iron Hands. Its electrically charged palms might be based on defibrillators, due to their similar and also handheld nature, and because its counterpart, Hariyama, has a signature move that is known as Smelling Salts, which is known as Resuscitation in Japanese, which is exactly what defibrillators do. Additionally, what's weird about this is that Iron Hands is Electric Fighting type, and the only other electric fighting types currently in existence, which are Pomo and Pomot, also have a defibrillator theme, which we talked about in part one of this video. Many people have remarked at just how small Iron Jugulus is, but that is actually intentional, as all of the future Paradox Pokémon, with the exception of Miraidon, are shorter than their modern-day counterparts. Iron Moth is obviously a counterpart of Volcarona, and Volcarona is one of only three Pokémon to have multiple Paradox Pokémon counterparts, with the other two being Cyclozar and Dawnfan. Cyclozar obviously represents Scarlet and Violet as a whole, since its Paradox counterparts are the mascot legendaries of the games, but Volcarona and Dawnfan are also really interesting here as well, as they come from Gens 2 and 5, which are the two generations that have had heavy ties to Generation 9 and many rumors surrounding them regarding potential new games that could be coming soon. Iron Thorns is a rock electric type, and as of right now, every single rock electric type Pokémon is some kind of variant or form of another Pokémon, as the only ones that exist currently are Iron Thorns and the Alolan Geodude line. Frigibax is my favorite Paldea Pokémon, and my second favorite Pokémon of all time. 
This is weirdly an unpopular opinion because this Pokemon is amazing, so I'm gonna give you a reason why it's amazing. Frigibax randomly has this little piece of ice on its face, which seems kind of weird for it to have, honestly, but it is likely the single greatest pun that has ever been made in the history of mankind, as it's possibly meant to be a cold sore, which is possibly meant to refer to this Pokemon as a cold sore, as in dinosaur, because it is an ice-type dinosaur-inspired Pokemon. The dino inspiration is further exemplified by its evolution Arctabax, which is inspired by the dinosaur known as the Concavenator. Fossils of this dinosaur were first discovered in Spain, and it has been hypothesized that the crest on its back, where Arctabax also gets its crest, could have been used as a thermal regulator, explaining this Pokemon's ice typing. Arctabax evolves into Baxcalibur at level 54, and it brings in a pretty obvious Godzilla inspiration into its design. As such, the level it evolves is possibly a reference to the year 1954, which is the year that the first Godzilla movie was released. One really cool thing about Gimme Ghoul, meanwhile, is that it is pretty significantly implied to be the reincarnated spirit of the King of Paldea, who we hear a lot about in the games, who was greedy and loved treasure. This is shown by Gimme Ghoul being a ghost type, having a treasure-loving theme, and being found near the old ruins and watchtowers of Paldea that date back to the time of the king. Its dex entries also mention it being born about 1500 years ago, which is also consistent with the timeline and presence of the king as well. Golden Go is known as Surfugo in Japanese, and is able to create a board that it literally surfs on to move around, including on water, but despite all of this, it is unable to learn the move Surf. Wochin and the rest of the Treasures of Ruin are the very first Pokémon whose base stats were changed via an in-game patch. All of their base stats were lowered from 580 to 570. Chin Pao, despite being an Ice-type Pokémon, cannot learn the move Ice Beam. It is one of only three Ice-type Pokémon who cannot learn this move with the others being Frost Rotom and Snom. Like some other Pokémon we have discussed here, Ting Lu has a pretty cool inspiration, as it is likely inspired by the Varako sculptures that can be found in the Iberian Peninsula. This not only explains the look of Ting Lu's body, but it supports the location of the Ground Blight Shrine where it comes from in Northwest Paldea, as the Varako sculptures can be found in roughly the same location in the Iberian Peninsula. You probably wouldn't have guessed it, but Chi Yu is likely based on a bit of Shakespeare. It is likely inspired by the phrase green-eyed monster, which was coined by Shakespeare to refer to someone who is jealous or envious, and sure enough, Chi Yu does have green around its eyes and is mentioned in the Pokedex to be born from envy. Not to mention, it is also considered a monster as well due to its ruinous nature. Back to some more Paradox Pokémon, Roaring Moon drops a pretty big bombshell in its Violet Pokédex entry, as it acknowledges the existence of Mega Evolution, meaning that Pokémon Scarlet and Violet take place somewhere in the Mega Evolution timeline. Meanwhile, Iron Valiant is currently the only Pokémon in existence with the Fairy Fighting type combination, and it gains these typings from each of the Pokémon it is based on, which are Gallade and Gardevoir. Interestingly, Corydon actually has some unused Pokédex entries within the data of Scarlet and Violet for its limited build 
which is the form that you first find it in at the start of the game. They say, the ecology and other data about this Pokemon are unknown. It was named Coridon by the professor who discovered it. And it has similar characteristics to a creature described in an old book as the Winged King. Miraidon also has unused dex entries for its limited form as well, however, they basically say the same exact thing as Coridon's do, just with Miraidon referenced instead. However, another interesting fact about this Pokemon is that when Scarlet and Violet were first released, it could learn Power Gem at level 49, but with the Teal Mask update for Scarlet and Violet, its ability to learn this move at this level was strangely taken away. It can, however, still learn the move via TM. An interesting thing about Walking Wake is that its tails, especially in its official art, resemble waves, reflecting its water type. They also move like waves in-game and go from blue at the base to white at the ends, which resembles crashing waves. Walking Wake also has the ability to walk on water as well, just like Suicune can. True to their origins as the Swords of Justice, Iron Leaves and each of the Paradox Swords of Justice have a signature move that is some type of blade move, and is also categorized as a slicing move in the games. When it was introduced in the Teal Mask, Diplin was able to use the Eviolite item, which implied that it could evolve further even though it couldn't at the time. But sure enough, this was obviously an allusion to the fact that Diplin would evolve again into Hydrapple when the Indigo Disc DLC was released. Poltergeist is currently the shortest Grass-type Pokémon, and is tied with a few other Pokemon as the shortest Pokemon overall at just 4 inches tall or 0.1 meters. Its evolution Sinistra has a signature move that is known as Macha Gacha and has a couple interesting tidbits to its name. Its primary effect is that it heals the user in addition to doing damage to the opponent, but it can also leave the opponent with a burn. This makes it currently the only HP draining move with an additional effect, and the only grass type move that is capable of inflicting a burn. Now it's time for the Loyal 3, and Okie Doge has a shiny form that in my opinion doesn't look great, but it does have some meaning, as it comes from the colors of the Shiba Inu and the Japanese Akita, which it is based on. Monkey Dory and the rest of the Loyal Three are all 100% male in their gender ratio. This is interesting because legendary Pokemon typically do not have known genders, and the reason that this is the case is because it's intended to add to the Loyal Three's rivalry with Ogrepawn, who is 100% female, as this dynamic ultimately creates a battle of the sexes type of situation between them and once again adds to their rivalry. This fact on Pheasantipity also applies to each member of the Loyal Three as well, but if you send them out in a battle against Petrunt in the Scarlet and Violet epilogue, Petrunt will respond with some custom dialogue where it appears to be upset that the Loyal Three are battling against it. The same thing also happens when you send out Ogre Pawn against Petrunt too where Ogre Pond will get some custom dialogue itself, expressing its distaste for Petrunt upon recognizing it. Both Arcaludon and Hydrapple are introduced in the Indigo Disc DLC because they directly represent the Unova region where this DLC takes place, and by extension, the New York City area that it is based on. Arcaludon represents Unova and New York's many bridges, and Hydrapple represents New York's nickname as the Big Apple. Likewise, Hydrapple and Arcaludon also represent the theme of past and future that is present in Scarlet and Violet, 
as Hydrapple is based around traditional and ancient folklore, such as the Hydra, like its name suggests, while Arcaludon is based more around futuristic industry with its steel type and its basis on bridges. The DLCs they come from also represent this as well, with the Teal Mask being more traditionally set and the Indigo Disc being more futuristically based. That is, if you consider the fact that Hydrapple's pre-evolution, Diplin, did in fact make its debut in the Teal Mask even though Hydrapple was introduced in the Indigo Disc. I got a cool one for you though with Gouging Fire, because while many people think that the dinosaur legendary beasts are literally just dinosaur legendary beasts, there's way more thought to them than many give them credit for. For instance, Gouging Fire could possibly be inspired by the Deccan Traps, which is a volcanic formation in India that is also thought to have contributed to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Additionally, Gouging Fire is based on a Ceratopsian dinosaur, which lived during the same time the Deccan Traps were being formed at the end of the Cretaceous period. And all of this ties back to Entei, because Entei, as mentioned in its Dex entries, has a heavy association with volcanoes. Meanwhile, one of Raging Bolt's signature moves is Rising Voltage, and it is the only Pokemon who can learn it by level up. Even though the move itself was introduced a generation earlier in Generation 8. The Swords of Justice being future Paradox Pokemon, such as Iron Boulder, and the Legendary Beasts being past Paradox Pokemon, is likely a reference to the regions the Pokemon that they are based on come from, as it reflects the focus on history and the past of the Johto games, and the focus on newness and modernity of the Unova games. My fact for Iron Crown also applies to all of the Paradox Swords of Justice as well, but each of the Paradox Swords of Justice retain their primary typing while swapping out their shared fighting type for the psychic type. The reason they were given the psychic type here could be a reflection on the more brutish fighting type and these Pokemon's status as future Pokemon, meaning that in the future, these Pokemon would have evolved to use psychic powers to fight over more basic fighting techniques. A really cool fact about Terrapagos is that its cry could be heard in-game from the moment that Scarlet and Violet were released, as its cry can be heard whenever a Pokemon terastalizes. And last but not least, we have Petrurunt, and we have a fun one for Petrurunt at that. Believe it or not, Petrurunt is the first ghost poison type Pokemon since the Gengar line in Gen 1, and therefore it is the only other ghost poison type too. Currently, this also makes these Pokemon the first and the last ghost types that appear in the Pokedex as well. And there you have it. Between both videos, that is a fact on every Paldea Pokemon. I'm sure we'll get more new Pokemon in Gen 9 before too long, but for now, this covers all of them. And with that said, be sure to let me know all your thoughts in the comments below, and leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more if you haven't yet. With that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon, and until then, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this one, I really, really appreciate it, and I... We'll smell you guys later.